There's Thurston Howell, I mean Clayton Thorson, getting selected by the Philadelphia Eagles. We'll do the play-by-play for those of you listening on radio. His buddy, his buddy, he t- his buddy's like, hey, man, here I am, man. Come on, man. Give me. He stiffs him twice. Twice. Look at him. Oh, he's about to go once, over the hug there. Not once, but twice. And he, he almost went psych on him the second time. It's oh like he's leaning gosh. in like, oh, see ya. Oh, man. Oh, the camera's on. I like the I like the festivity though. They got the little flags hanging up all across the back of the room. Being a gentleman, uh, wow, well, 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 his his buddy. I don't know who that guy is. We'll probably never know his name, but we'll never forget the moment where Clayton Thorson's buddy was left hanging twice. All right, that that probably should qualify for one of our draft superlatives. Uh, Best leaving a guy hanging award. I don't know. I didn't have enough time to think of anything better than that. Chris, what do you have for us? Well, I'm going to go uh, something uh, with one of my favorite guys when it comes draft time. You know, jo- Mr. Uh, Johnny Value pick. Okay. That's my superlative. Johnny Value. Okay. is That's Chris Ballard in the Indianapolis Colts. Again, Chris Ballard showing like, uh, like hi- him and maybe a few other teams in football showing that he's playing chess when everybody's playing checkers with the NFL draft. I I mean, trades out of the first round, accumulates three second round picks, okay? And then gets three really good football players in the second round to improve his team. You know, Rocky Sin, corner out of Temple, you know, was borderline first round talent, uh, obviously goes in the 30, pick 34. Ben Banagu, who was one of the great, better athletes in all of the draft, one of the more explosive athletes, kind of a defensive end slash outside linebacker from TCU. Uh, and then to get Paris Campbell, also in the second round, who for my money was the second best uh, wide receiver in the draft to pull that off. And again, just to have the foresight to know the players that he liked that could fill the certain spots on the roster that needed to be filled. Uh, I just can't give enough credit to Chris Ballard and some of the magic he's pulled off the last two years in the draft. And keep this in mind, too. We discussed this yesterday at PFT. Chad Kelly, the former Mr. Irrelevant, who was number two on the depth chart in Denver before getting cut by the Broncos last year, had an ugly incident right. at a Halloween party that Von Miller hosted, got thrown out there, went to somebody's house uh, that, that he doesn't know and got run out of the house and ultimately pleaded guilty to second-degree misdemeanor criminal trespass. The Colts are thinking about reuniting him with Frank Reich. Remember, it's the Jim Kelly nephew, Frank Reich, and Jim Kelly together in Buffalo. And with Jacoby Brissett, Due to become a free agent after this year, they, 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 it's just another Johnny value where this guy's out there. He's available to anyone, and it could be Chad Kelly landing with the Colts. They're going to make a decision on whether or not to add him later this week, I'm told. All right, the Loaves and Fishes Award is my first uh, superlative, and it goes to the Seattle Seahawks, who entered the draft with four picks. They emerged from the draft with 11 picks. We, we knew they were going to try to turn four into more. They turned four into 11. It was so bad last week. They were talking about him, how important undrafted free agency was going to be because that's the only way they were going to get their players. They ended up with 11 draft picks. They entered with four. They ended with 11, and only one of the picks was their original pick. The other 10 belonged to someone else, and the first 10 players they drafted all came from Power 5 schools, could contribute right away as rookies. That's an observation made yesterday by Michael David Smith on Twitter. Yep. I stole it from him, but the fact that I mention it makes it less egregious. Mm-hmm. Bottom line is the Seahawks took four picks and turned them into 11. John Schneider, Pete Carroll working the board to perfection and to get DK Metcalf where they did. What? At the bottom of round two, trading yes. up to snag him. Uh, another example of the Seahawks, as you said with Chris Ballard, they're playing che- chess while everyone else is playing checkers. Yeah, exactly. And they're one of the teams that comes to my mind as soon as I said that comment about Chris Ballard. I mean, yeah, I mean, it just Schneider uh, is a magician when it comes to draft and, you know, figuring out who he wants to fill his team. Again, we got more, you know, just notice or, or information again that they are moving on to a new era in Seattle. You know, Frank Clark out the door doesn't matter. They're going to build with young talent. LJ 
Collier at the end of the first round. Great pick. Marquise Blair, the safety from Utah. I mean, Mike, if you watched his highlights, you'd go, damn, I think that's Cam Chancellor Jr. So they got that type of guy. And then you mentioned it, DK Metcalf at the end of the second round. Uh, I mean, arguably the most explosive athlete in the draft. Um, that is a, a phenomenal first three picks by the Seattle Seahawks. Got to give him a lot of credit. And yeah, they're just, uh, they're great at building a team. I, I really got to give them a, a lot of credit. John Schneider's amazing. All right. You know what? I, I mean, I know, I know. Yeah. Let me just say one thing yeah. about DK Metcalf. I right. know all the concerns, like he only runs the nine routes. Like all he does is catch touchdowns, right? He, he ran a four, three, three. I mean, th this guy potentially, I'm not going to compare him to Randy Moss yet. Yeah. But if he, if he can run down the field and catch the ball in traffic, and Russell Wilson, who's making $35 million a year now, is willing to throw it to him when it looks like he's covered, and he can come down with it on a regular basis, th th this is going to be one of the steals of all time. Oh, without a doubt. This is the classic case of everybody overanalyzing too much in the NFL. I will be shocked if it doesn't work. You know, they're going to go, they're all going, oh, he doesn't run an extensive route treat. Oh, well, I don't, I don't know if this guy can do it. I mean, he's only one of the freakiest athletes in the draft. I'm not sure he can make a right turn instead of going straight. Whoa, we might have to drop him down in the draft. Yes, there's too much physical ability there. You know, I think other thing, you know, he, he rubbed, I think, some people wrong in meetings, DK Metcalf. Then the offense wasn't good in Ole Miss. But like we talked about a little bit at the start of the show, you know, too many times the players are evaluated for team struggles instead of just evaluate the player. It's not DK Metcalf. Calf's fault that the offensive coordinator only had three routes in the game plan. You know, that's just all there was to it. I don't know. It's not he can't call the plays. So uh, I, I, I don't understand that always. Okay. My next superlative. You mean it was Avengers weekend. So I got to give what? Thanos some love. It was the Avengers weekend end game. I got to give John Dorsey, AKA Thanos some love for trading up into the second round. Cause he saw damn, the best corner, the best hover corner in the draft, the guy who's six two and ran four three five is still available at pick forty six, and who everybody agreed was the best man to man cover corner. But his knock was, oh gosh, he can't tackle because we talk about tackling so much with Deion Sanders and Darrell Revis and Daryl Green, such an important part of their game. They were so great at it. I mean, that's why they're famous. It's because of their tackling. I don't ever understand that. But John, I mean, John Dorsey again to have the vision to go, whoa. There's a, there's a corner that's 6'2", has Richard Sherman-type measurables, but is faster than those guys on the board. I'm going to make a move and go do it. And uh, I just got to give him a lot of credit. I thought that was a great move by them. You know, a team that didn't have a first-round pick and was just really sitting there observing the second round and made a move to get a guy that I think has a chance to be very special. And, and I, it's just funny, uh, when, when you refer to John Dorsey as Thanos, I have this vision of five weeks ago when we were in Arizona, <laughs> and you called him Thanos to his face, and yeah. he looked at me like, is this good or bad? <laughs> like, he's complete, He's even more clueless than I am as to who <laughs> Thermos is. All right, uh, Thermos. <laughs> let's, uh, all right here's, here's my next one. Uh, no excuses for Kurt award goes to the Minnesota Vikings because their first four picks all went on the offensive side of the ball, and two of them. Two of them, interior offensive linemen who will be able to execute the zone blocking scheme that Gary Kubiak is instituting as part of Kevin Stefanski's new offense. And as you chip away at, well, they got this problem, they got that problem, the offensive line isn't any good, this guy's no good. It's, it's, and it's all going to come back to Kirk Cousins. And as the team gets better, as the coaching gets better, as the offense gets better, as the blocking gets better, the question is, will the quarterback play get better? Because they can make all the excuses they want for him based on last year. This year, it's now abundantly clear that the Vikings are only going to go as far as Kirk Cousins can take them. It's on him now. Can he do it, Chris? Yeah, I know. That was a great pick for them to get Bradbury. Uh, they certainly needed that, something to help their interior offense line. I'm really... I'm really shocked that you went with uh, something Minnesota related. Really, really surprised her there. But uh, I just uh, no, no excuses I hear you. for Kirk. You're it's, right. It's you know, hey, he, these are the areas where they need help. 
They've addressed those areas, and now it's time for him to flourish. Yes, it is. Again, you know, with his contract and the situation, he's going to have to perform for to, to back us all off uh, himself or get us off his back. But you're right. There was a great draft pick by them to get Irv Smith in the second round and then another lineman uh, a little later there in the fourth, certainly going to help out the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, and Kirk Cousins does. He's, he's running out of excuses. He's going to have to perform big time this year. Okay. I'm like, what is that song with the Beatles? Help me. All right. I, you know, help. I need somebody. Is that right? Yeah, it's just help. It's yeah, just it's help. Just it's not help. help me. It's not the fly. Well, it's the Beatles. It's I just help. wanted to make sure. I just wanted to make sure. And that's my, my award to the Baltimore Ravens because that's what Lamar Jackson was saying uh, going into this draft. Like, help. I need somebody to throw to. I need somebody. And he got two people. Okay. Two of the first three picks. I'm not a singer. So, but I love, it never stops you. I uh, know it does not. Uh, I love what Eric DaCosta did for the Baltimore Ravens uh, at the top of this draft, especially, you know, to get two receivers, Marquise Brown, a guy that can fly and just bombs away and get to scare the crap out of defenses, get a miles Boykin from Notre Dame guy. I've gotten a close look at the last few years covering those games in, in, in round three, he's six. Four. He's got an unbelievable vertical, 50-50 balls, balls over the middle. That's where Miles Boykin's going to have great value for the Baltimore Ravens. So they got a little bit of both at wide receiver and then smashed in between those guys. They got arguably one of the most physical, physically dominating edge guys in the draft. And Jalen Ferguson out of Louisiana Tech just screams Baltimore Ravens. I mean, just big, strong, you know, look scary in his uniform. And I feel like Baltimore's got an eye for picking those guys better than anybody else. So got to give DaCosta and the Baltimore Ravens credit for what they did. One observation before we take a break. Yeah. The only reason you're even aware of the song Help from the Beatles is because it's currently on TV all the time as part of a Google commercial. You had no idea that that song even existed. I'm a very well-rounded classic rock guy, so don't do do not do that. Don't stereotype me, Mike Floriel. I'm very well-rounded. Here, 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 here's, here's my challenge for you. Yes. Find the Help album. It was the soundtrack from a Beatles movie in the mid-60s. Find it and listen to it because it is awesome. There, there are like seven or eight great songs on Help. It's one of my favorite Beatles albums. That's your, that's your you. insight into Thank my you world. Thank you, wise one, Mike Florian. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.